Good day. Um, my name is uh, Chris Forster. I am a research fellow at the Northwest University, where I was a professor for many years in Christian ethics. I retired in 2011, but uh, is still attached to the unit for Reformed Theology at the Faculty of, of, of Theology. With the assistance of the Northwest University, I published this book, The Gift of Life Towards an Ethic of Flourishing Personhood. Over the years, the words in Genesis 2 verse 7 uh, tickled me. Uh, the word which is used for the breath of God. God breathed uh, the, the breath of life into the human being and the human being become, became a human person. So uh, what uh, interested me was why was a separate word used for the breath of life, namely the, the Hebrew word nesmat. And the human being, the human creature, became a human person. So I reflected on this gift of life and what it entails for human life today, for moral agency, for human conduct. Uh, in the first chapter, I described this um, words of, of uh, Genesis 2 verse 7, I discussed the meaning of nismat, the meaning of human personhood, and asked the question, what can we uh, learn from this basic idea of uh, humanity in the Bible to come to an ethic of flourishing personhood. Today, uh, many scholars uh, are, are doing research on human flourishing. And I do not have the final answer, but I uh, endeavored to introduce the concept, the gift of life in this broader discourse and to reflect about what it can mean or could mean for a flourishing life today. Now, I, from the premise of, of the gift of life, I um, focused on several issues regarding life. First of all, that human life is unique. It is a unique life. And when you are dealing with life issues today, you must say something about uh, evolutionary biology, about the relation between God's creation and what science teaches us today. So in this chapter, I uh, uh, conclude that uh, conclude that human life is is unique, although we cannot disregard uh, the evidence of natural sciences regarding the development of life. The second chapter then deals with uh, the sacred life. And here I want to pay attention and to revisit again the issues regarding the ending of life by way of abortion and euthanasia and also capital punishment. My contention is that all these issues have to do with, with uh, the idea of the sacredness of life and how we can uh, use this concept 
in our model agency today regarding uh, abortion, regarding euthanasia, regarding capital punishment, and everything related to these. Then in a following chapter, I pay attention to life as dignified life, life as dignified life, and how we can uh, pursue and really work towards a dignified life in our modern society where we uh, are dealing with oppression, where we are dealing with uh, sexism, with xenophobia, with poverty, uh, etc. I think in South Africa these issues are very prominent at the moment. And um, how do we uh, pursue the dignified life um, in, in uh, the midst of all these problems? And here I pay attention to, of course, the concept of of human rights, of uh, constitutional democracy, what it entails, but also what we can do as, as, as civil societies to dignify the life of people, especially the vulnerable women, the poor, uh, people with other uh, sexual orientations, and so forth. Furthermore, I pay attention in the next chapter about life as relational life. And in this respect, I uh, start with family life because uh, I think uh, the, the most basic relationship in a human society is marriage and family. I pay attention to uh, 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 the morality of relationships from the perspective of what uh, of what we learn from biblical teachings uh, within the concept of a broader biblical theology. Also, I pay attention to uh, relationship in the church in in faith communities. And then in the end, our relationship in the body politic, uh, in the state, and also uh, civil society. Relationships are very important. Relationships can make or break us. A good relationship and a, a life within all these sectors of relationships, in the end, help us to live a flourishing life or can inhibit us to live a flourishing life. Furthermore, in a following chapter, I argue that uh, human life is a dedicated life. We are not living for our own benefit. We, we are living as people, among people, and as people for people. And I think the greatest example of um, this principle was the concept uh, taught to us by Jesus to be a servant and, and to have the attitude of servanthood, just as he himself did. Today in theology, uh, many scholars uh, pay attention to the idea of being a Christ for others. And here I want to uh, shed light on, uh, on how I see it within the concept of life as a gift from God. And several ethical aspects are touched on in this chapter also. Then I continue to discuss life 
as a blessed life. Uh, the fact that as human beings with the gift of life are not just mere human beings, but people equipped by the Spirit of God with various gifts um, and also the gift of each other, what we can mean as, as a blessing to others and what we can experience by the blessing by others. For example, if uh, Christ says that blessed are the poor, what does he mean really? And what does it entail in real socioeconomic um, life today? How, how can the poor today be blessed? Because these things are not only something on the spiritual realm, but also in the socio-economic and political realm. And then I conclude in a final chapter to say, okay, the gift of life, the qualities of life, like um, a dedicated life, like a unique life, like a sacred life, what does it entail for people today in the pursuit of flourishing personhood? Flourishing personhood to enjoy life. Joy, from a Christian perspective, is much more than fun. And I think uh, Jürgen Moltmann reminded us about this. What is joy? The deep sense of meaning, of belonging, of acting towards a good end, that is flourishing life. And I ask the question at the end, what does the gift of life in all these facets of life I have described mean for us today to experience a flourishing life and to enjoy life. Thank you.